how Obama is scheming to sabotage Trump's presidency. When former President Barack Obama said he was heartened by anti-Trump protests, he was sending a message of approval to his troops. Troops, yes, Obama has an army of agitators numbering more than 30,000 who will fight his Republican successor in every turn of his historic presidency. And Obama will command them from a bunker less than two miles away from the White House. It was shaping up to be a highly unusual post-presidency. Obama isn't just staying behind in Washington. He's working behind the scenes to set up what will effectively be a shadow government to not only protect his threatened legacy, but to sabotage the incoming administration and its popular America First agenda. He's doing it through a network of leftist nonprofits led by Organization for Action. Normally, you'd expect an organization to set up to support a politician or his agenda to close shop after the candidate leaves office, but not Obama's OFA, Organization for Action, OFA. Rather, it's gearing up for battle with a growing war chest in more than 250 offices across the country. Since Donald Trump's election, this little-known but well-funded protesting arm has beefed up staff and ramped up recruiting of young liberal activists declaring on its website, quote, we're not backing down, end quote. Determined to salvage Obama's legacy, it's drawing battle lines on immigration, Obamacare, race relations, and climate change. Obama is intimately involved in OFA operations and even tweets from the group's account. In fact, he gave marching orders to OFA foot soldiers following Trump's upset victory. Quote, it is fine for everyone to feel stressed, sad, discouraged, end quote, he said in a conference call from the White House. Quote, but get over it. Move forward and protect what we've accomplished, end quote. That's what he demanded from them. He said, now is the time for some organization, some organizing, so don't mope. Far from sulking, OFA activists help organize anti-Trump marches across U.S. cities, some of which turned into riots. After Trump issued a temporary ban on immigration from seven terror-prone Muslim nations, the demonstrators jammed airports chanting, no ban, no wall, sanctuary for all. Run by old Obama aides and campaign workers, federal tax records show nonpartisan OFA marshals 32,525 volunteers nationwide. Registered as a 501c4, it doesn't have to disclose its donors, but they've been generous. OFA has raised more than $40 million in contributions and grants since evolving from Obama's campaign organization, Obama for America, in 2013. OFA, in IRS filing, says it trains young activists to develop organizing skills. Armed with Obama's 212 campaign database, OFA plans to get out the vote for Democratic candidates. It's grooming to win back Congress and erect a wall of resistance to Trump at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. It will be aided in the effort by the Obama Foundation, run by Obama's former political director and the National Democratic Redistricting Committee, launched last month by Obama pal Eric Holder, to end what he and Obama called GOP gerrymandering of congressional districts. Obama will be overseeing it all from a shadow White House located within two miles of Trump. It features a mansion, which he fortified with construction of a tall brick perimeter, and a nearby taxpayer-funded office with his own chief of staff and press secretary. Michelle Obama will also open an office there along with the Obama Foundation. The 55-year-old Obama is not con content to go quietly into the night like other ex-presidents. Critical to the fight is rebuilding the ravaged Democratic Party. Obama hopes to install his former civic rights chief, Tom Perez, at the help of the National Democratic Committee. Perez is running for the vacant DNC chairmanship, vowing, quote, it's time to organize and fight. 
we must stand up to protect President Obama's accomplishments, end quote. We're also promising, quote, we're going to build the strongest grassroots organization force this country has ever seen, end quote. The 55-year-old Obama is not content to go quietly into the night like other ex-presidents. He said after the election, quote, you're going to see me early next year, and we're going to be in a position where we can start cooking up all kinds of great stuff, end quote. Added the ex-president, quote, point is, I'm still fired up and ready to go, end quote. This is by the New York Post, and it's on the State of the Nation. 